All right, today I'm going to show you how to stock the twin main husk with ancient dragon smithing stones and somber ancient dragon smithing stones. You'll also be able to do this for any of the other merchants in the game. You're going to need a UXM unpacker to unpack your game. You're going to need smith box. This is going to be used to create the mod. You're going to need mod engine 2 to load the mod. And then you're going to want anti-cheat toggler to disable the easy anti-cheat for the game. All the links will be in the description below. Let's get started. Okay, so we are in smith box version 1.0.1. 5.1 what we want to do is go over to the param editor tab and this is going to list all the parameters for the game and then in the search box we're going to type in eq we're going to search for the equipment parameters and what we want to select out of here is going to be equip ram goods and now we want to go ahead and search for smith this is all of our smithing stones so in this example i'm going to use the ancient dragon smithing stone and the somber ancient dragon smithing stone so just click on it and all we need here is going to be the name and id now i've already got that already listed here so we're going to go ahead and go back and we are going to get rid of that and we're going to get rid of this. Okay, so next we want to go ahead and search for our shop. So in the param search box, type SH. And we want to choose shop lineup param. So now um, this is going to list all the shops in the game. We are going to be using the twin maiden husk. So we're just going to type in TW. And here's everything for the twin maidens. So I'm going to select smithing stone one. So over here, all we have to do is change four parameters. And we're not really going to be concerned with anything else at the moment. So first thing we want to do is we want to make a copy of this. So we're going to go ahead and right click and we're going to go ahead and duplicate. So now any changes or additions are going to be highlighted in green. So now we're going to go ahead and click on that and we're going to change the name. So what we're not going to do is we're not going to change this. This is going to designate the merchant that this belongs to. So we're going to go ahead and go in and copy our name. All right. And then we're going to go back and we're going to go ahead and get our ID. Okay. So the ID is actually going to be this reference ID. This ID is for this entry. The reference ID is for the item. So we're going to go ahead and paste there, tab, and now we have our ancient dragon smithing stone. Next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and change our sell price override. For some reason, there seems to be a minimum threshold. 1,000 runes is going to be our minimum for this. Uh, feel free to play around and, and see if you can you know get it lower, and that's fine. But for my testing, this is what I was able to get to pop up consistently. All right, so now we got that. We want to go down here to visibility event flag. Now this you're only going to need to change if you haven't supplied the appropriate bell bearing. So I'm going to be demonstrating this on a character that I haven't actually provided the bell bearings. So I'm going to change this to zero. One thing I do want to point out is the amount to sell. Right now it's at negative one. What this is going to do is it's going to allow this to be replenished. So if we change this to five, for instance, then that means that there's only going to be five of these available to buy. So we want to make sure that this is negative one. There we go. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and duplicate this. All right. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to copy the name. And then we want the ID and then somber. Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone now updated. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to change the sell price overwrite. This one seems to only work if it's 2000 or more. So we're going to change that. All right, and now what we want to do is go over to File, and we want to save out our parameters. So we're going to save all modified params. Okay, and then we're going to go to our project folder. And we're going to go ahead and copy this regulation.bin file. And then we're going to paste it in our mod engine mod file or mod folder. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and launch the game. Now, before you launch the game, what you want to make sure is that you got Steam running and that you have disabled the easy anti-cheat using the anti-cheat toggler. So let's go ahead and 
double click on the launch mod Elden Ring dot bat. Okay, so we're at the round table hold and let's uh, check in with the Twin Maiden. All right, and there we go. We got the Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone and the Somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. So you can go ahead and add whatever you like through the same steps that we've done to get these. Now, you could actually go ahead and say update your rune arc instead of having only five available you can go ahead and change that one parameter to negative one and then that would just replenish now once you've purchased your um items the smithing stones whatever you add then you can actually go ahead and close out of the, your game load it up normally without using the mod and those items that you purchased will be available to you. That being said, the uh, items will no longer be available in the shop, but whatever ones that you did purchase will be in your inventory. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you're looking for more Elden Ring modding, you can check out this video. Stay brutal, make some morbid mods later.